Hi everyone, I'm Susan and I'm back with another tutorial regarding setting up your own lettering. Now, yesterday I did show another video and I explained how I always start with a full alphabet that I've typed once, I've saved it in a separate uh, project so that when I am going to do some lettering, I can bring it up, take a copy of it, put it in my project and I can start away working. What we're going to do today is a different technique to what I showed you yesterday. Yesterday we used an alphabet, we then gave it the design that we desired using styles, colors, and we then set them up as letters in our letter tab, which I then said you can save on your way out as a digikit. Today I'm going to work slightly different because I'm going to do a a background. I'm going to use materials to take the design into my letters so they will match the project that I'm working, the digikit I'm working with. Sometimes some digikits are really nice and then you see the letters and think well they let me down, they're not what I want. So now I'm going to show you how to create your own. So with no further ado I'm going to show you firstly this uh, sheet I was talking about with all my letters on and it is an alphabet sheet. So all I just did here was type my alphabet through, they're all together and if I needed to take a few of them I just double click, pick up the ones I want or I'm gonna move them like that, uh, hold the shift key down and click to the end of where I want, copy it because I'm only doing about five or ten letters Otherwise, it will, I'll be here forever doing the whole alphabet and I don't want to waste your time. So now I'm going to insert a new page. And on my new page, I'm going to paste my lettering. The lettering I just copied and I'm going to work with these. Now the first thing I want to do, I'm going to delete all these that I've got here, I use them for my front uh, page. There is an easier way of getting rid of everything but I'm not going to go through that now. I might do another video to show you how to get rid of them at once. Right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into my um, digikit and I'm going to go and select, so my digikits come here and I'm going to go and select some materials. So if I go to materials, gives me all the different materials here, I can now select a couple that I might like. I'm gonna do this, uh, now I'll show you how to do your own with that one. Let's just pick up something with some flowers or well, that's a nice one. Let's pick up that one. It doesn't matter, it, it depends on the project you're gonna be working with. So depending on the project you're doing is the one you would want to use. So I'm going to bring it in. Make sure that it is at least as big as the number of letters you're going to be creating or a little bit bigger. And here what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take my lettering. I'm going to make sure they're at the top front of my uh, project like so. I'm going to put my letters there. Now I want to transfer all my design into these letters. I'm going to even make them a little bit bigger I think because if they are bigger you can see the design comes in so much nicer. So I'm going to enter there and make them bigger. They take more of the design. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to punches. Now I've got one set up ready, but I'm going to explain to you what I did. I went to my digikits and under digikits I right mouse click and it will say add category. So when I did that category, it asked me for a name and I did alphabet. You can call it whatever takes your fancy. So here, now underneath my digikits, I've got alphabet ready and as you can see, I even put the whole alphabet in there, depending on 
when I change the font style, I drag it, the whole alphabet, into my punches. So next time, I'll find it ready. I'm going to do it with just a few letters because I just want to show you how it will work. So I'm going to click and drag them all as one punch in there. Now I can get rid of that. I'm going to bring in the punch out. Get rid of my original. I don't need that. And on the punch, I'm going to make it as big as I desire. As long as it stays over the piece of material that I have. And when I'm happy with where it stands or where it, it is, I just click on punch. Now, when I punch, the first thing I tend to do is click on the edge and delete it. I then go over some of my lettering and delete. Not all, because all I want to get rid of is these pieces that come between my letters. Now, when I move my punch, I've got some letterings ready there. Now I want to make sure that they are more visible. So the first thing I'm going to do, highlight them, and I'm going to go to line and make sure they have a line around them. If I don't like the color, I just go to color pick and on the line, I say I want a black line around them. So I've got there, the color is black. If I want, I can make them a little bit darker and I'm ready. Now I can see all my letters. So far, so good. They are good, but they can be even better. Because once I do that, I can, and there's nothing to stop me, experiment with my styles. So I can put bevels on if I want to. For instance, I can go to a bevel like so. And I can say I want a pillow around them. I might decide I want them slightly 3D. And if I'm happy with them, I mean, you can go into other styles. So if I went to instant effect, I might say, I wonder how they look if I put glass on. So I could go down to where it says glass. There's a category called glass. I use it a lot in some of my other projects. And what you can do when you find glass, and I can't see it for whatever reason, I'm sure it's usually, oh yes, it's because I haven't gone down far enough. So I could go down to glass and say, right, what if I put a glass on it? Well, no, I don't like it. Let's try a different glass. And if I don't like it, don't worry, I'll take it back. That's all right, but I prefer it how it was. So I'm going to keep it as such. Now, the next thing is, remember, I said last time that when you try to drag them into letters they come as one whole letter group and that's not what we want that's why people do what they do some of the, the videos i've seen people would actually go and create letter a then on its own letter b and then they put them in one at a time what i do is after i have them set as i wish I'll go into the scissors and cut an area on the white between my letters, just like so. Now they're all separate letters. The difference is that when I now try to send them in here, the system will ask me, do you want to group them? And of course, no. So now I've got the letter E. So I find the E that is lowercase and I press enter. I've got an uppercase E, so I click on it and press enter. I've got an uppercase D and a small case D. A B, an A, a C. Now I'm not sure whether that's the upper or lower C. Let me see if it can tell me. That's the lower C. I can see it from the design. I got the uppercase C an A and a B. So now my letters are in there. Don't worry that they're not in order. You can adjust them when you do your digikit and replace them. However, what I want to do next is this. 
I'm going to get rid of my design here. I don't need it anymore. If I want to type in something with my letters, for instance, I could do ace and I'll enter, uh, sorry, I'll insert. I always say enter when I do this, but I know what I mean, I'll insert. Now, they didn't come straight because of how my punch was. They were on two lines, so the E was on the second line. However, it's not a problem because from the align design, I say align bottom. They're all now aligned. If they come too close to, to each other, all I need to do is pick up one. Using the arrow key on my keyboard, I will move it to give it the space I want, pick them up and say centralize or distribute horizontally. And that's it. When I clicked on there, they're now perfect. I'll group them and I can quickly adjust the size as I wish. Place it on my project and it will match any project design that I will use from that DigiKit. Another thing that you could do is this. So, sorry, so that's with any materials that you might have. Another thing that you could do is what I'm going to show you now. If I wanted to have a different type the same colors, but I want a different design in my text. I'm going to bring in my material. Again, I'm going to take my tool pick. And on the tool pick, I'm going to create, select a gradient sampler. And I go from one side, click and drag to the other side. That picks up all the colors that I have on there. So now, If I pick up a box and I click on the color sampler on the fill, it will give me the colors that I had in my original design, but this time in this way, uh, in line. So it goes one color after the other. I will do another tutorial to show you what else you can do with this picker and how you can adjust it on, on any card you have and all sorts. But for now, I'm only dealing with the lettering. I can now go to my punches, select the punches I want. I'm only going to do a couple of letters to show you. I punch them. get rid of the pieces I don't need. Remember to give it a line, could be a line from the colors that we have. So if I go to the line and do a black line, that will now, or that should now, once I set it, give it a line roundy. Now, once I did that, again, I can go and put a glass on it. And if I like what I see, I do the same process as before. Use the scissors to cut them. They're now separate letters. I don't need all these. Right? Pick them up with a new um, letter empty of any other letters, it just click and drag them. If I try to do it now, it won't let me because A, B, C has already been used. So I'm going to delete these just to show you. And this time I take these and drag them in. I wouldn't have um, deleted them. I would have saved my DigiKit previous one. Now I say, no, they'll all come in here and it starts asking me the letters. So that's a B and I enter. That's a capital A, enter, capital C. I think it's a capital C. Let's have a look. 
Oh, well, I've only got a C. So capital C, enter, small a, enter, and capital B, enter. I got my letters. So now, if I wanted to write, let's say, the name Baba, I've seen this on telly, and it's a name, it's uh, an American gentleman that I've seen. So I just go there and I see Baba. I say insert, and there it goes. Now these came too close to one another. So again, all I do, pick up the first one, just drag it slightly sideways to decide how much room I want, pick it up, and I say distribute horizontally. Once it's done, I group, and now I can resize or do whatever it takes my fancy. I hope that you found this useful for you, please do experiment. The more you play with this, the more you realize how much you can actually do. I mean, I've got some uh, font that is quite elaborate. And if you use an elaborate font, you'll get an elaborate design. So please do go and experiment. You can create whatever you like to match whichever project you're working on. Hope you'll enjoyed it. Please do remember to subscribe and do click the reminder button or the notification button so that when I place my next video, you will be notified if you would like to see them. Thank you for your support. I will be placing more videos as we go along. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye-bye.